Hi designers, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics for setting up tabs in Adobe Illustrator. And then if you want to stick around longer, I'll give you some tips for styling this into a table look or rows. The cell sheet will be available to download from my website with a small donation and that helps support my channel and also gives you a head start on some formatting. So I have a sample set of data here in Excel. I'm just going to select all of the data, command C to copy and then take my type tool and either click or point text or click and drag a text area. And you'll likely want to select an appropriate font. Next, we need our tabs palette open. Go to window, type, tabs, and here's our palette. So with all the data selected, I want the tabs to affect the header data and everything else. And up here, so primarily you're going to use left, center, or right justified. So I'm going to start with a left justified. And you can click and drag in this white space just above the ruler. And in the X value, you can use your arrow keys to go up and down by an eighth or whatever units you're using. So that first one I have at three quarters of an inch. And I can just click in that white space and click and drag. And you can kind of see a vertical line there. And you can click and move that around manually or with an exact value. So I'm just going to click and keep adding tabs and kind of look at the data width. So now I'm just looking at the data and the units column might look better centered. So with that tab selected, I'm just going to click the center justify and adjust a few of these other ones. If you need to adjust the alignment specifically, such as in this header line, I've right justified the column, but I might want sales amount to be centered. You can just go to that text, select the tab, and change the justification. Be sure to save often. So that's how to quickly set up tabs. Now let's do a little bit of formatting and make our header row more prominent. And you may want to change the letting more, depending on how you want to space out your data. Let's add a rectangle to create a solid background and change the text color. All right, so what if we want to add a little bit of formatting and start adding some lines between rows? It's a little bit easier to read. One way you might do this would be with the line tool. You can click and drag holding down shift and Select your stroke color and the stroke width. And I'm going to actually place the line at the bottom of that header. And holding down Option Shift, I'm going to drag a copy to the bottom. With the Blend tool, W for shortcut, I'm going to select that gray line, which you can barely see now, and select that bottom gray line. Next, click on the Blend tool. And let's do, you can either do specified steps if you know how many lines you'd like in between or specified distance might work best in this case. So either way, I need to determine what the line height needs to be for the spacing. Okay, so I ended up looking at my data rows and adjusting the steps to a specified value. And then I worked on the letting height. All right, so what if we want to add row bands, alternating rows to this? Grabbing the rectangle tool, I'm going to click and drag a rectangle to the whole row width. And I'm just going to give it a colored stroke that I can see. And then we can either duplicate this to the bottom, like we did with the blending and specify steps. Or if you get these aligned, you can click on the rectangle and holding down Option Shift, align that as you move it and duplicate down and then do copy and command D to duplicate that transformation. And I'm going to lock my text. And up here at the top, I'm going to select similar objects, which have that same color and group them. Command G. And let's adjust these to fit the proper row height. So now I'm going to swap the stroke to a fill, or you can choose your row band color now. I've chosen a subtle light blue. And now I'm going to select alternating rectangles. So once you've selected all of those, group them, Command G, and change them to white. And now all of my rectangles are grouped. Within that group is the band color. And I'm going to send this to 
behind the text, which is command shift left bracket. And maybe I want a border around this, which is looking like a table. And now let's add some column lines. So with the line tool again, from the top of the rectangle to the bottom, go ahead and start drawing and then holding down option shift. I'm going to duplicate the lines and it's a good idea to group those lines. So if you need to change the color later, it'll be much easier to do. So now I need to tweak some of the text and you may want to place it on its own layer and lock the background. So I'm going to make some adjustments to my tabs now. And I'm adding a tab before all of these dates so I can justify those centered. Okay, so this is looking so much better now. Next, I'm just going to grab a couple of columns to show you how to set up leading lines. And now we can select all of our text and again, set up your tabs. And this time up here at the top next to the X value is a leader and you can type in a period there. You could do a space to make it a little bit wider of a space between dots. And in some cases, you may want to set up character styles and paragraph styles. So maybe if you wanted this text to be bold, you could save that as a bold character style. And that way, when you format other text, you can change just the character style and it'll update all of those. So you don't have to go back and copy and sample that text style. So you can see if I edit the character style, it updates everywhere that the style is used. You may also want to do the same with spacing for paragraphs, which leads me to multi-line text. So if you're creating data that has maybe a description that's longer, you're going to run into a little bit of formatting issue. So now the spacing I used on the character letting is too much for multi-line text. So let's cinch this up to a better letting height. And unfortunately, what you're going to have to do is manually make those breakpoints and then hit tab until it aligns to the correct tab indention. So that's one pitfall of using Illustrator to lay out tables of information. Adobe InDesign is going to be more suitable for actually working with tables. But if you're set on using Adobe Illustrator, it's pretty easy to set up your tabs. I hope this video helps you with your project. If it did, please like the video so others can find it. And that lets me know that you like this type of content. And please subscribe to get notified when I post new content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Take care.